use headphones for best experience. Thanks for your fantastic support. Hi, welcome to another video. I hope that you're all uh, doing well and uh, that you're staying safe and uh, healthy. And today I would like to draw a map of Mexico. Actually, I've had the idea to do this for a really long time now, but uh, somehow I found it too interesting. <laughs> I mean, when I, I did some research for Mexico, I just couldn't stop. I found I could really like dig into Wikipedia and um, just find so much information about um, ancient cultures and it's just so much so I almost couldn't stop but then I realized today is May 5th so it's a really important day for Mexico I guess and even though I won't be able I think to publish this video today already it kind of made me uh, yeah I mean take the step to finally record this video and I hope you enjoy um, I'll start yeah as you can see I've already started I made this I prepared this canvas um, some week ago with some blue ink but now I'll start with it the, the coast or just a rough sketch so I can do the coast uh, I can follow this these lines and make a more visible coastline later so we have the, the Yucatan Peninsula here to the south East. We have a quite narrow isthmus here between the Atlantic and uh, the Pacific Ocean. And then actually quite a big area to the north west all the way to this corner here the Baja California Peninsula the southernmost no, I think it's even more to the south when you reach the border to Guatemala this must be the most southernmost tip of the mainland quite complicated borders here
The southern tip of Baja California is um, more to the north than the northern tip of Yucatan. So I guess this is quite accurate. And here it's narrow, but then it can't be too narrow here because here it's basically where it's happening a lot. Need room for much information here. <laughs> this map. So let's do. follow this line exactly, it's just like a guideline. It's not even just one line as you can see, it's a lot of parallel. I really want to have room for a lot of places here. Then this won't even. I won't even have room for the, the entire north western part of the country. So maybe I'll sheet a bit here. Don't mind. Make this area a little bit smaller in scale. If you like maps like I do, you definitely don't like what I'm saying right now. the border to United States of America. And um, This is one of the most complicated shapes of a map I've done so far, I think. Quite complex. But you can see this is Mexico, right? I haven't cheated so much.
states or some borders between states. There are actually a lot of states in Mexico. The United States of Mexico. Let's see if I remember. Yeah, 31 states and one uh, federal district. And I would like to show them all here. show you some reverse as well. some colors. I think uh, since the canvas is blue, I think I'll use white for the uh, contour. It makes sense because yeah, the sketch already is in white. Try to do it a bit more accurate this time. We have Baja, California, Sud. Sud, that's in Portuguese, isn't it? Sud. In Spanish. Golfo, California. This could probably be the biggest island in Mexico, Tiburon. This uh, quite big island is called uh, Isla Angel de la Guarda. Here we have a small bay. Pacific Coast Isthmus of uh, Tehuantepec California Sur and Baja California. All the way to Tijuana. San Diego in the US. And here we have another quite big island called Cedros. Continue from uh, the isthmus of Tehuantepec, but now on the Gulf of the Mexico side, the Atlantic side of the continent. And here we have Texas, 
already made a quite detailed map of Texas and these islands here. Remember them from last time. And uh, from um, again from the isthmus of the Huantepec. We follow the Atlantic coast or the Mexican Gulf coast to the east and the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. Cozumel, quite a small island, Isla Mujeres. And um, that is basically the coast, I think. Or I can continue with the coast here, even though it's not the Mexican coast. Belize, uh, Guatemala. So we're done with it, with the first step. green borders this time. Mm. Let's see. I don't want to do dotted lines because there are so many borders here, all the 31 states and one federal district. And dotted lines, it's a bit, uh, I mean, it takes a bit more time, I guess. But if I do the state borders, I mean the the border between um, Mexico and the U.S. in dotted line. Let's see. And um, this border follows the the river Rio Bravo del Norte. Uh, Rio Grande in English. On the way to Ciudad Juarez. Uh, El Paso on the other side of the border. And then it the river. I mean the river uh, starts here more to the north, but then the border goes like this. Horizontal. To the Colorado River and eventually to the Pacific Coast. Now we have the border national border to the south. We have the border to Guatemala. And uh, Belize. I'm not sure actually how to pronounce it. And um, now actually I'm not sure again how to continue. I think before I do all the states should do some uh, physical features on this map. Maybe mountains, 
maybe rivers, some lake, um, and I have to choose a color, of course. I think this light orange could do. Or some other features, and I think it will be perfect for the mountain ranges actually. So, we have a mountain range to the west called the Sierra Madre Occidental, I think. Yeah, Occidental. And uh, occidental actually means western. So the western Sierra Madre mountain range. Sierra Madre Oriental. Oriental means east. Now, let's see. Probably I'll start here. Because I have to leave the, the uh, coastal plains. They're not mountainous. Quite big areas along the coasts are plains, flat plains. And the mountains are more inland. Crosses the entire continent here. A lot of volcanoes and mountain peaks. Now I have to be a bit careful because it really don't. To, to the coast here, actually. So I think I can do like this. Also, we have Sierra Madre del Sur. Not so mountainous. Not, I mean, not as mountainous as the Trans-Mexican volcano. to the other mountain ranges. But I mean it's not completely flat, so I have to do some symbols for mountains here. But an area that is uh, very flat, that's the Yucatan Peninsula. So here uh, there will not be any 
visible in the mountain ranges of this map. Okay, let's move on. This area between the mountain ranges actually is a very, very large plateau. Uh, the um, central Mexican plateau. But I'm not sure how to present that. I just leave it like this. So, some rivers. You can start with Rio Bravo del Norte. because it just follows the border. Now, this color, I think it didn't turn out super well, actually, on the blue canvas. See if this one is better. I think so. This uh, light blue. So this is the longest river in Mexico. Maybe you can count this as in Mexico because it's just uh, at the border. And uh, we have uh, another river here, tributary to Rio Bravo del Norte, it's Conscious River. Something like this, starting here in Sierra Madre Occidental. And in Sierra Madre Occidental, also, another river starts, which is flirting in the opposite direction to the Gulf of California. That's the Yakui River. And then we have two rivers that I find super fascinating because they're actually endori endoric, an endoric basin here in the center of the Mexican plateau and the Chihuahua Desert. So they're not, they're starting in the Sierra Madre um, Occidental, but they actually This is a Nazas river, actually just ends up here in the middle of the plateau. So it's, uh, yeah, doesn't end up in an ocean like most rivers do. And they're they're called the um, they're called Endoric River. And another one is um, uh, Aguanaval. Aguanaval should be should be. Let's see. This is a river system. Together, there could be counted as one of the longest rivers systems in Mexico. But uh, I think when you measure rivers and like uh, want to have a list of the longest rivers, it really depends on how you measure and count. So I also read that uh, Lerma River was the second longest river in Mexico. 
and let my river start in the Trans Mexican Volcanic Belt close to Mexico City. It starts um, let's say it start quite much in the center here. River ends up in the biggest lake in Mexico. That's Lake Chapala. And then we have Rio Santiago that ends up. I mean, from, um, from Lake Chapala to the Pacific. So now we also have a lake here on this map. And uh, then we have a river from the Sierra Madre Oriental floating to the west, uh, sorry, <laughs> the east, ending up in Gulf of Mexico. And uh, yeah, I already mentioned the Colorado River uh, floats mostly in the US, but it actually ends up here in the Gulf of the California. this? I don't know if I, if I mentioned that. Panuco. And I would like to add one more river, and that's the Balsas River. It ends up here. Here somewhere. Mm, not here, but It starts somewhere in the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt, but this time east of Mexico City. And this river, uh, the Lerma River, started somewhere west of Mexico City. So M Mexico City is located here. And I will not show you, there are some rivers here, but uh, yeah, quite many. But uh, I mean, they're like, I guess there are some other types of rivers because there are no really high mountains here. It's very different uh, climate and uh, um, yeah, landscapes and nature in the Yucatan Peninsula, I guess. Now to the state borders. And I think first I thought I would use red, but no, actually I will try to use dark blue. So it's almost the same um, color as the canvas, but it's just a kind of experiment. We'll see, because there will be so many uh, lines here, and I don't want it to look too messy. So maybe this is could be a solution. And uh, yeah, I think I will continue with dotted lines actually. So I just choose a point here to start and um, then we have Tamaulipas. Hmm. Yeah. Hope the 
this turns out good. I think it was too difficult actually for me to see what I have been drawing, so I had to change my plans a bit. What do you think? since it was almost invisible it doesn't matter that I already have the blue dots underneath because they're almost invisible this was much better so here we have uh, Tamaulipas and Nuevo León Here we have the border between Coahuila to the north and Sorry, I just have to concentrate. Uh, yeah, this is Coahuila. It's a Chihuahua. Let's continue move to the west. So straight line, horizontal line, between Baja California 
and uh, Baja California Sur. Pacific Ocean to Mexican Gulf as a reference because it's so messy here and I'm a bit worried I will mess this up otherwise. So I'll start with the line here. And now we're here at the Lake Chapel. Follow the Lerma River for a while. Not too long. And uh, we go like this. San Luis Potosí and uh, now to one of the more complicated shapes almost all the way to the Rio Santiago Zacatecas. And now to the most complicated shape of them all. see we have a small state here it's Aguas Calientes and here so we have another small state it's Colima and here we 
can follow the Balsas River for a while to draw the state of Michoacan. zoom in a bit because like I said this uh, area will be a bit messy and uh, it's a lot of detailed information here So here we have this uh, long shape here to the east, along the coast of uh, the Mexican Gulf. It's uh, Veracruz. These uh, coastal plains here. And Guerrero State and here we have Morelos here we have the federal district and capital city of Mexico and uh, here we have also probably could be the most complicated all the states. Even though I said before it was Jalisco, it could actually be the Mexico state here, surrounding uh, the Mexico City. And uh, here you can now see we have uh, Hidalgo. We also have Puebla I'm very glad I could I can leave this area now because it was a bit complicated but I'm happy it turned out quite good actually And now, to the most easternmost part of the country. Yeah, this is not super easy. 
So, inhale we have Here we have uh, Chiapas. Here we have Tabasco. Campeche. Yucatan State. And Quintana Roo. groups, this group of islands here, Islas Marias, islands of the coast. cities probably and uh, then I'll use this pink color let's start this part of the country again and then we have uh, the capital of Tamaulipas Ciudad uh, Victoria located here somewhere and we have the capital of Nuevo León Monterrey and here we have Saltillo capital of Coahuila here we have Chihuahua and Chihuahua. Here we have Sonora and the Yakui River and the capital Hermosillo. To the very north, capital of um, Baja California. It's Mexicali, just at the border, northern border. And to the very south of this peninsula, California, we have La Paz, capital of. Baja California Sur. And we have Durango, with the capital here in the mountains. Somewhere, put it here. Victoria de Durango. And um, capital of Sinaloa is actually Culiacán. And Zacatecas. 
Zacatecas, de Camper Zacatecas. Zacatecas. Aguas calientes, de Camper Aguas calientes. San Luis Potosí, de Camper San Luis Potosí. Nayarit. Not sure I mentioned Nayarit while I was uh, drawing these shapes, but Nayarit is the state, the capital Tepic. Located here. And um, Jalisco. State, the capital Guadalajara, Guanajuato State, with the capital Guanajuato. Querétaro State with the capital Querétaro And now let's see Colima State the capital Colima Michoacan State, the capital Morelia. Morelia should be located a bit to the north there, the mountains. Here somewhere. And uh, the state of Mexico. In the capital Toluca, and here we have the huge city, Mexico City, Ciudad de Mexico, and. In Hidalgo, we have the capital Pachuca, located here. Tlaxcala, in the state Tlaxcala. In Morelos, we have the capital. Cuernavaca Cuernavaca In Puebla state we have a capital called Puebla city And in Veracruz we have Xalapa See, all these capital cities are located very close to each other, actually. In the center of the country. And... Um, Continue with um, Guerrero. Here we have the capital Chilpancingo. 
And in Oaxaca, the capital is also called Oaxaca. Located in the center. And in Chiapas, we have the capital called Tuxtla Gutierrez. Should be located here somewhere. In Tabasco, we have the capital Villa Hermosa. And in Campeche, we have the capital Campeche, or San Francisco de Campeche. And in Yucatan, we have the capital Merida. From Merida, you can you can um, uh, travel to a lot of ancient uh, archaeological sites from the Maya culture. In all directions, here. there are really a lot of them here. Chichen Itza, for example, is located here. But maybe I will include those uh, later on this map. Some important uh, or interesting archaeological sites. Now we also have the last and easternmost state, Quintana Roo. Uh, then we have the capital Chetumal, located here to the very south. cities that are not uh, capitals. A lot of big cities are capitals in their state, but then I would like to point out just a couple of big cities in case there are they aren't um, uh, a capital city. So for example in uh, Tamaulipas we have a big city to the very north called uh, Reynosa. Here by the Rio Bravo de, de Norte River, and I'll use white thinner line pen for this. And um, in Chihuahua State. We have Ciudad Juarez here at the corner. El Paso, the other side of the river. And uh, also we have in Baja California by the coast, uh, Pacific coast, we have Tijuana. San Diego on the other side, the border. And let's see now. We have actually a big city in Coahuila, just at the border to to Durango. And uh, that's not the capital, and that's um, 
see Torium located here. And then we have Leon, biggest city in Guanajuato state, more to the west. And we have the biggest city in Guerrero, that's not uh, Ch Chilpancingo, it's actually Acapulco here, by the coast, a famous city. And uh, let's see, yeah, Veracruz is not just the name of the state, it's also biggest city in this state, but not the capital, it's located by the coast and it's a very historically important city in Mexico. And uh, also we have in Quintana Roo, biggest city Cancun here at the northeast northeastern coast of the peninsula Now, let me point out some more features. Um, I would like to show you two mountain peaks. Um, the two highest mountain peaks. And that's... Um, First, uh, Pico de Orizaba, or in Nahuatl language, Sitlaltepetl. And it should be located somewhere here in the volcanic belt. So it's the highest mountain peak in Mexico, and it's um, it's 5.6 thousand meters high, or 18,000 feet. And it should be located um, at the border between Puebla and Veracruz. So, here we have the highest mountain. And then we have uh, another famous mountain peak, also an active volcano. Yeah, uh, by the way, Sitlaltepetl, it's a uh, Nahuatl language and it means uh, star mountain. Sitlal is a star and Tepetl is mountain. Nahuatl language is, uh, is a language that uh, was used in the Aztec uh, And um, yeah, we have uh, another mountain peak or volcano located really close to Mexico City. You know, Mexico City is here. And here we have the second biggest mountain peak in Mexico, Popocatepetl. It's 5.5 thousand meters high or 11,000. And Popo Cate uh, Popo Cate Popo Ca means smoking, and uh, Tepetl means mountain again, so the smoking mountain, the volcano. 
and it should be located at the border between Puebla and Mexico State here maybe I have to do some smoke in a way um, like this and um, I would also like to show you some historical archaeological sites there are so many but uh, at least a few of them I'll continue using this a bit more thin pen to do that um, let's see start. We have a um, really old civilization, civilization here, that was uh, located mostly here, in the southern part of Veracruz. It was the Olmecs culture, and uh, this was in the pre-classic or formative uh, era, so it's one of the earliest known civilizations in old uh, Mesoamerica, pre-Columbian Mesoamerica. And the Olmecs um, were famous or are now famous for these uh, giant like sculptures of um, heads, really huge heads, faces, stone. And um, I read about a capital here, or a, an uh, ancient city called uh, San Lorenzo. Must be, it's, uh, to me it sounds like a new name, not probably what it was called by the Olmecs, but uh, anyway. can change to another color, green perhaps. It's not super visible actually. But it doesn't matter. And um, then I would like to show you Yeah, and this, uh, I mean, this culture uh, was flourishing around 1500 to 400 BCE, which was a really long time ago. We also have the um, Teotihuacan, and um, Teotihuacan had a really huge city back in the days. So it was the largest city in pre-Columbian Americas. With, I read there were like one hundred twenty-five to two hundred thousand inhabitants, and it was located quite close to mod to modern-day uh, Mexico City. But it was in Mexico State, a bit to north east of Mexico City. So should be here somewhere. The city with the two most impressive pyramids in the world, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Avenue of the Dead as well. So I think the city was called the Teotihuacan, or if it was the, like the culture was called Teotihuacan. And this was in, uh, this culture flourished in uh, 100 BCE to 250 CE, so about 2,000 years ago, and it was destroyed in 250 CE. This uh, city, or part, uh, big parts of the city and this civilization, like, 
replaced by another civilization. I mean, not completely destroyed, but um, yeah, it's called like the Teotihuacan collapse, 250 CE. Um, let's see what we can talk about more. Yeah, we have a place called Monte Alban. It's actually the south. It's a very. It's actually now part of uh, Oaxaca city. And in Monte Alban, we had the Zapotec culture flourished around uh, 700 BC to 700 um, CE. And uh, also in this area we have the Mixtec culture, and the city, the capital city of Mixtec called uh, Tilantongo in post-classic times. So sometime around 900 CE to 1521 CE and the Tilan Tilantongo city was located a bit more to the west here And then the Mixtec also constructed parts of uh, Zapotec, no sorry, the, the Monte Alban city. They kind of took over it from the Zapotecs at some point. Um, and there are a lot of interesting places, a lot of them are actually located here. Also, we have Teotitlan del Valle, east of Oaxaca, so somewhere here, perhaps. It is a city founded by the Zapotecs. Not sure when, but uh, it was later refounded as a Spanish village in 1500 se uh, 1527. And uh, yeah, then we have uh, the Tarascan state, really huge state here to the west, in what's now most of uh, Michoacan. And Michoacan actually is the Nahuatl name for, for the Tarascan state. And the capital in this uh, empire was uh, Tsing Tsun Tsan. It was located uh, quite close to Morelia, so but more to the west here, the Tsing Tsun Tsan capital of Tarascan state, also called Purepecha Empire. And uh, yeah, this empire was the second largest in Mesoamerica when when the Spanish arrived in 1590. The biggest empire at that point was uh, the Aztecs Empire, and their capital was actually located just exactly at the same point as Mexico City today. And that was Tenochtitlan in the Valley of Mexico. And um, it was a lake here by then, the Texcoco Lake. And this fantastic city, Aztec city, Tenochtitlan, was uh, built in the lake with bridges. It was like an island with sort of bridges to to the mainland 
and it was uh, completely destroyed um, when uh, yeah, Hernan Cortes arrived in 15 yeah, he, ri he arrived in 1519 here to Veracruz and in two years later, in 1521, the Tenochtitlan city was completely destroyed. But for example, the, the Tarascan state um, and this uh, empire here uh, lasted until 1530 actually. So that was nine more years. And we also have the Toltecs. Toltecs, where were they situated? I'm not sure. They should have um, a legendary capital or a capital called Tula that probably is the legendary capital Tola mentioned in the literature as well the pre-Columbian literature from Mesoamerica and uh, this um, city Tula was located also very close to all these places here think in uh, what's now Hidalgo state so somewhere here Tula also, also in, this was in post classic era so around the 900 to 1168 CE but it could be uh, founded as early as uh, 750 I read somewhere and This was uh, the ancient cultures uh, located here in the uh, Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt and uh, also here west of the Isthmus of the Huantepec. But then we also have the Maya civilizations and um, in um, the Maya culture was actually centered here to the south uh, in um, classic times so before 900 CE there were a lot there are a lot of, of remains and um, archaeological site Maya sites here this area, also in Guatemala, Belize. But then something happened around 900 CE called the Classic Maya Collapse and these uh, cities were abandoned. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the Mayan cities in the southern Maya lowlands were abandoned by them. So I guess there were some other tribes, cultures coming here from from uh, somewhere else and um, then instead there were founded a lot of Maya cities here more to the north and these were the cities that the Spanish found when they arrived in 1590 so there were a lot of 
wars between and between uh, the Spanish and the Maya culture. Uh, so, but I can show you some of the of the um, the southern Maya lowlands sites as well. We have Tonina in today's Chiapas. And uh, we also have Palenque, a bit further north. And we also have Pomona in uh, eastern Tabasco. And uh, Calakmur in southern Campeche. And then we also have the northern archaeological sites, that's more recent. Uh, if I made these like round dots, I maybe can do these like squares. We have Edsna in Campeche as well. We have actually here on an island outside the coast, Isla de Chaina or Chaina. Also, my uh, archaeological site. And like I mentioned before, around Merida, we have a lot of sites here. So we have Uxmal. Mayapan Chichen Itza it's super famous also today it's one of the new seven wonders of the world the pyramids and temples and everything. a lot of variety in the architecture from different epochs and uh, we have Sibyl Chalton, a bit north of Merida. Quite complicated name, I guess. Sibyl Chalton. And uh, in Quintana Roo, we have Coba. And we have Tulum, the coast. These are archaeological sites, I think it kind of makes sense. They're not as visible as the modern day cities. I'll zoom out a bit more. And yeah, like I said, here we have Veracruz, where Hernán Cortés arrived, 1519, and totally changed the world, of course. First the Europeans, well, if you don't count the Vikings, like 500 years earlier, but the Vikings uh, turned back again, or like disappeared somehow, but uh, yeah. This became, became New Spain, eventually, and the new era, of the colonial era, began. It lasted between 1521 to 1821. New Spain was uh, even bigger than today's Mexico, so it was also part of... Yeah, it was California and huge parts of what's today United States. 
and also further to the south was New Spain, all, all the way to northern South America. But then um, in 1510 was the starting point for the uh, Mexican War of Independence Revolution. And in 15, sorry, 1821, did I say 1810? Yeah. Uh, in 1821, Mexico was uh, independent. This uh, War of Independence, like I said, started in 1810 by, by uh, someone called uh, called uh, Mico Don, Mico Don Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla and uh, he gathered an army and uh, held a speech about the independence in 1810 and he's uh, recognized as the father of the nation and actually, this date Hidalgo. Now let's see if I can find Hidalgo. It's yeah, it's here. It's named after Don Miguel. And um, then we also have the uh, the leaders of one of the most prominent leaders of the Mexican War of Independence and also the second president of Mexico, and that was Vicente Guerrero. And uh, Guerrero was given name for the state of Guerrero, so that is the state located here. And then we also have a person called uh, Jose Maria Morelos y Pavón. Also a leader for the Mexican War, War of Independence. And uh, he named the state Morelos. Morelos, Morelos, where are you? This little state. Here. And um, yeah, since it's the fifth of May today. I would also like to mention this um, this uh, person called uh, General Ignacio Zaragoza and uh, because the 5th of May is a date observed to, to commemora commemorate the Mexican army's victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla in 1862 and this was under the leadership of General Ignacio Zaragoza so the Battle of Puebla took place in Puebla City here 1862, May 5th. And yeah, I also read that about um, Tenochtitlan, or actually about Mexico City, that since it was constructed, this city was built exactly at, the, at this uh, place where the lake was located. And the old city of Tenochtitlan. So actually, Mexico. This is why Mexico City is constantly sinking. And I read that it sinks 15 inches a year. That's 31 centimeters. And uh, also that it's sinking in a whole century. It will sink 10 meters or 33 feet. So um, yeah, it's. It's basically built on a lake, this city. And it's a huge city with um, 21 million people living there. One of the largest cities in the world. And 
uh, the second largest city in Mexico is Guadalajara with 4.8 million people Guadalajara is the capital of Jalisco here and the third uh, biggest city in Mexico is uh, Monterrey Nuevo León. The fourth biggest city is Puebla City. The fifth is Toluca. So Puebla is very not very close but quite close to Mexico City and Toluca even more close to Mexico City but to the west. Around between two and three million population. And then we have the sixth biggest, it's Tijuana, the very northwestern corner, 1.8 million, this population. Then we have Leon, also 1.8 million, here in Guanajuato. And then we have Juarez, North in Chihuahua in the 1.4 million, and then we have Torreon here between Coahuila and Durango, Actually, there are like two cities here really close to each other Torreon on the Coahuila side, and uh, Gomez Palacio on. Durango side of the border. And uh, then we have Querétaro, 1.3 million people. Tenth biggest city. Or when I say city, I actually mean metropoli metropolitan area. So the big urban area around the city. It's been really fun to read about Mexico actually. And um, thank you so much for requesting map drawing videos. And there has been, over the time, it has been a lot of requests about Mexico. And thank you so much for your support all the support I get on the comments, emails and uh, messages and uh, uh, followers on Instagram and uh, patrons, supporters on uh, PayPal, Tingles, everything. Appreciate it so much and uh, yeah, for your comments and for supporting me with your nice words as well. So, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, that you found it relaxing. And uh, talk to you soon again. <laughs>